Recording in progress. we go we have sound but my device for checking the screen sharing is saying nothing it's black excellent okay here we go another monday night let's get about this our mate bugs and a cup of coffee and it just merges into one coffee for the day doesn't it what a great way to start your week so we have uh, bits and pieces of things to talk about tonight, some news, some great news, and some other issues to talk about what's happening in the wide world and how we're going to cope with it. So let's get after it. Here we are with our packages. Zanique, Tupan, Vu, Avanok, T-Drones, and Zanique Sophia. Welcome, everybody. We hope you've had a good day. We hope you got here in good time. I see Margaret's back with us again. This um, Zoom thing has become a tad unreliable in the last few months. I suspect there is a few changes going on in the background there, which never gets tested enough. But there you have it, stuff happening. Anyway, look, we've got a bit of good news tonight, which we can go through. Here we are, the 24th of July. We are on the downhill slope of the year. How did that just work out? I'm staggered that we've gone through the first six months of the year in a blink. Now we're already almost through the seventh month, and August is just around the corner next week. Amazing. But anyway, we'll do the best we can with the time we've got. Everyone goes forward together. We're absolutely committed to that, and we're going to make sure that we stick with it and keep everybody on the up and up. And I've got some things happening in the following and coming weeks that will be instrumental in everything that we're doing. And we'll get on to talk about that. Hello, Mr. Bauer. Good to see you here. Ms. Buckingham, Mr. Martin. Oh, someone's not here, Al. Malcolm Penfolds isn't here. Mm -hmm. He'll be with us shortly, I suspect. Okay, let's get after this. Remember, we are expressing our view as affiliates only. We don't represent those companies officially that we affiliate with and we're not giving financial advice. What we're trying to do is show you what we have discovered and we hope that there's a way you can take advantage of that. And if you need help, you know all you need to do is reach out. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I think the YouTube channel lists an email address you can use or you can put a comment in and I see the comments that come up even the nasty ones. We don't get many of them, though. Okay. Dubai. This was the conference they had or the function they had well, just a handful of weeks ago. And it was cool that they went through these industries so we can all see the level of disruption that this business is going to have. And it is amazing because just the airline industry is $636 billion a year. That's a lot of loot. A lot. So, minting has started showing in the website. Not for all of the systems, but 
a number of them are. T drone and VU not showing yet. So here's the Zenink Zenik listing. And it shows you the hubs. Uh, over on the left, you can see. See if I can get my little laser pointer to work here again. Turn on laser. Yes, over here it shows you the dates that those minting licenses were purchased. And then over here on the right, it shows you the number of coins in this case that those minting licenses have created. Now, that doesn't convert into a lot of cash at the moment, but wait till those things are worth about 10 bucks each. Now, all of a sudden, we've got an attention getting number and they will go higher than that. So here's two pan. You can see the same thing has happened here. We've got our numbers. So this one at the top, unlike the Zanique one, the full license is at the bottom, but this is a full license that was at the top of this list, and this is a fraction of a license at the bottom. And those two numbers are reflected on the dashboard of that person's website. The good thing about that is that we're starting to accrue some real numbers. City hasn't been minting for very long, but you can see the date that that license share, it's a one-eighth share, was purchased. And over here we can see the number of tokens that it has minted. So it shows you that it started minting at 99.9655. So it will continue to mint at a reasonably good number for some years. Regardless, how's that for a number? 12,183. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? That's just chewing along amazingly. And I hope that I get to meet this guy in Dubai again. And he was very interesting to talk to. And boy, they are really kicking some goals with this token because they started on the second movie and the miniseries, TV miniseries. So they all of those products will... Uh, generate income for these tokens. And so we're not just connected to one single movie. We are connected to a lot of media. T-drones, not minting yet. You can see I've got uh, a one sixteenth on this screenshot and a one eighth, And you can see they're at different uh, time frames. So once that starts minting, we'll have numbers showing up over here. So there are a lot of products happening and lots of activity going on in our website. This will soon be excellent, Martin. Martin's just saying his T-drone is minting. Um, this will soon be minting directly into the Nomo app. Not quite doing it yet, but we're on that job. Vu. Not minting yet. You can see there's uh, there's a number there for that minting share, and this is actually one of the small uh, packs. And I just got someone to send me that screenshot to show me a VU license, and it's going along, just not showing up yet. So, what do we have? Six stages in the money life cycle, and I'm going to talk a bit more about the last part of this. So we start off bartering. I know that uh, Mr. Langford down in South Australia likes to always threaten to send me a carton of wine that I might do something for him. That's called barter. Then you get free market money. Once it becomes mainstream, though, then you get some sort of government oversight. But once the government gets into regulating everything, you know what's going to happen. They want to monopolise it. We'll talk more about that in a moment. 
Government will then find a way, even though the system is set up and it's working, the government will find a way to debase the money, which means devalue it. And that creates problems because eventually you end up with no confidence in whatever the currency is and it collapses. And I've had a number of people that have challenged me on that and said, no, that doesn't happen anymore. Well, they clearly haven't been watching the news because it happened in Venezuela. It happened in Zimbabwe. And it's happening right before our eyes to our own currency. Go back and look what's happening with um, inflation. Turkey's another one. Yes, Martin? There's numbers of them in the world where these currencies have completely collapsed. What happens then is you get free market money coming out again, and we arrive with tokenization. Yes, Martin, Lebanon is an outstanding example. That went from the showpiece of the Mediterranean and degenerated into just an awful war zone for many years. I think it's settled down a little bit, but they still have no value in their currency. So now we've arise, arrived with tokenization. We're going to tokenize the bit you can see in the middle, the gold bars. Now, this is a, a little uh, video that I'd like you to pay attention to. So it's humorous, but you need to understand that everything he's saying is true. Thanks for your time. Very good to be with you, Brian, and good evening. Now, you're a market economist. Yes, well, most economists are market economists, Brian, to a degree these days, yes. How do you think things are going at the moment? Well, there's a great deal of international concern. I mean, we're taking a toweling, but things will sort themselves out, Brian. This is what a market does. Well, can you explain to me how it all works? How the economy works? Well, yeah, what's the problem at the moment, for instance? Well, what we've got at the moment is an international credit crisis. Yes, how does that happen? Well, I'm a bank, Brian, and I borrow money and I lend it out and I charge more to the people I'm lending it to than I pay to the people from whom I'm borrowing it. Well, who do you borrow money from? Well, from, you know, depositors, Brian. Have you got a dollar? Well, you yeah, know, I sure. borrow your dollar and I give you, you know, there's your bank balance. One dollar. One dollar. Right. OK, and you pay interest to me on that? I do, but I also charge you fees. Well, why do you charge me fees? Because, Brian, I'm looking after your money. Your money is secure with me. I'm a bank. I mean, uh, this is a very important amount of money. This is probably your nest egg. It's safe with us. And, and how much interest do you pay me? Approximately the same as I'm charging you in fees. Oh, good deal for me. Well, your money's secure with us, Brian, and I then lend that money to businesses, and those businesses generate, generate income. income. This is how we build yeah, the economy. Yeah. And they put that income into the bank. They do, of course, Brian, and that builds the savings pool, and we can invest more money. Well, who do you lend that to? Well, to people who need... Credit, Brian. You see, money creates more money. So if we can create money that creates more money, we're, we're broadening the economy. Expanding, we're expanding yeah, it all the time. Yeah, yes. yeah. But shouldn't people just buy the can afford? You don't need to afford the things you're buying, Brian. You need to afford the interest on the money you need to borrow in order to buy them. And you're charging higher rates for all this? We do hop into them a wee bit on the credit rate, Brian. We stick the hydraulics under that because it's a slightly higher risk strategy. Do people need to be buying these things that well, they can afford? Obviously they think so, Brian. I mean, these things are advertised to people as very necessary, very important and deeply, deeply attractive. Well, who's advertising things that people don't need? The companies we're lending the money to. So, OK, then you bought into the US uh, subprime housing well, market. Well, Brian, so yeah. concerned are we to build a better Australia you helped build a worse America. Yeah, well, that was an accident, Brian. What we were doing was investing in the international investment market. And that's been a disaster. It, frankly, famously, hasn't been a huge success hitherto. Well, so what are you going to do? Well, now you give me $700 billion immediately. Why? Well, because we need it, Brian. I mean, the system needs money. Imagine the economy as a body. It needs blood pumping around it, Brian. And you haven't got it? We haven't got any money, no. Well, why not? Well, we lost ours. I've just been explaining that. Well, you're not having mine. Mum! Brian won't let me play with his stuff. That's the only money I've got. You're in for it. Now, that's a classic piece of comedy, but sadly, very true. It is amazing that that piece of really good comedy as a political 
confrontation of the system that we have is so scarily accurate today. That's how our system works. And governments keep bailing out banks who pay politicians lots of money that used to be called bribery, but now it's called campaign donations, so that they get what they want. And they run around with our money and charge us for the fact that they can't actually look after it or provide a decent rate of return. It's scarily accurate. So keep that in mind when you're reading news headlines. So what's happening and what will happen? You can expect some massive changes in the currency space in the next few years, and I mean massive changes. You will see amazing things like CBDCs. They're going to lead the way into a finance system built to keep the poor people poor and the rich people rich. It absolutely is completely structured that way because what's coming is an entirely new way to look at currency. And we are in that part where it says along comes free currency again. On that note, I am going to this summit in Dubai. And that's only a week and a bit away. So they sprang it on me just a couple of days ago. So I will be going over there to meet with the design team to design our tokens and get them on the blockchain. So it's on the 5th of August. It's only on one day, but I will be there for about four days talking with people who speak different languages about a blockchain language to get the design structure set up. So we actually have an opportunity now to get this underway. We've been waiting for this a long time. It's at the Burj Khalifa again. The meeting is down there. The office is up there. I'm doing my very solemn best to not go to the office. I'll meet with everybody down the bottom. It's a much more salubrious environment down the bottom because you can actually walk out when you like, not take a parachute when you want to go out the window. So how am I going to get there? I discovered, suspected, and then went and checked, yes, that Webjet gift cards are available from easyshoppingcards.com. So now we have an opportunity to get some cash back on that trip. So I got into Webjet and worked out how much it cost, and that ended up giving me $123.20 benefit in gold for booking those tickets on Etihad, I think it is, that I'm flying. Um, I booked those tickets with gift cards that I got from easyshoppingcards.com. Cost me zero to do that. Thank you very much, Easy Shopping Cards. Now, only after I had booked the accommodation did I realise I could have done that on Webjet also. Not happy, Jan. <laughs> I realised I'd done myself out of some money. But I am driving to Grafton this weekend, so I'll have more gold from doing what I'm doing anyway because I'll need to put fuel in the car. There's a gift card for that. Thank you very much, Easy Shopping Cards. Everything I do, I try and make sure that I can do it through ESC if I can, because that one and a half, two, four, five percent rebate adds up to a chunk of gold at the end of the year. And I know we've had uh, some people I haven't seen her on for a little while. They're going through a bit of drama. Uh, they do everything through ESC and they got a very handsome 
amount of loot converted into gold last year. So just keep that in mind, folks. If you're doing anything a bit weird, have a look on the Easy Shopping Cards website, see if you can do it with a gift card. Cost you nothing to do it, but you get gold back with everything that you do through that system. It's very cool. So now I was talking about changes in the currency system. So in May, the United Nations unveiled a new scheme to push a digital ID system on us. Complete global wraparound. In their document titled Global Digital Compact, they call for a whole host of various changes to be agreed upon and implemented to regulate society's digital future. Now, I tell you what, if that doesn't send a shiver up your backbone, it should. Chief among them is for it to be mandatory for banks to issue digital IDs to customers and ostensibly refuse service to anyone deemed non-compliant. Now, I don't know if this has happened to anybody else on the call other than the person that I know is here with me. Um, I have been deemed to be non-compliant by one bank. I know a number of other people that were just doing what they do every day, and they got judged to be non-compliant and debanked. The vault that we use has been uh, kicked out of one bank because they dared to go to the bank with some cash. Absolutely outrageous. And these halfwits that run these banks think that they know more than we do. They don't know how to ask you what you're doing. Then when you mistakenly tell them what you're doing, they don't understand, so they just put the line through your name and say, no, don't like you, you can't use a bank. Now, this is happening to people every day right now. What if this becomes now the global standard and every bank does it? Now, so far, all the people that this has happened to, they have been able to go to another bank. But yes, Cassie, with absolutely zero redress, these bankers are doing this. At the moment, you've got a good chance of finding another bank. What if you can't? What if this is a global system run by the United Nations and you can't use a bank? Aren't you glad that you heard about what we're doing? Tokenization phenomenon. A major shift started in 2017 with initial coin offerings and that grew into DeFi, Web3, NFTs, et cetera, et cetera. Since then, we've seen exponential growth in that field. 400 billion. But that's not tokenization of a real asset. That's cryptocurrency. How good is it going to be when we switch? June saw a significant development in the digital asset landscape with the advent of major financial institutions entering the crypto market defying regulatory headwinds because institutional investors are the backbone of traditional finance and them coming into the market is a turning point for those digital assets. But that's not the cool thing because we are digitizing real-world companies and businesses. Have a look at that list. HSBC, Pfizer, Ford, AIG, Prudential, Shell, Siemens, Brookfield, Westfield, ANZ, Scotia Bank, you name it, you can keep going on, Mask, CBA. Singapore Airlines, Etihad, they're all going down this road. 
but they're not going down the road of cryptocurrency because they're seeing the problems with that. They've got other options. Tokenization is the process of converting an asset or the ownership rights of an asset to a digital share. The trend looks like it could reach 16.1 trillion by 2030. 16.1 trillion tokenizing assets. They're expecting it to be 10% of global GDP by 2030. Now, whether it does that or not, what I can tell you is it's going to be a very, very large number. I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's more than 10%. But we're talking about taking real world physical assets and turning them into tokens. We're at the forefront of that space. The new revolution. Look, you can tokenize pretty much anything. I remember when we started, we got together with Sophia, people from over there telling us you couldn't tokenize gold. And the reason we were in business with them was specifically to do that. They were shocked when I called them and said, why can't we tokenize our gold? And they had about five major problems that would prevent you from doing it the way they were used to tokenizing. When I came back and said, we've solved all those problems. We don't have those problems. All we want you to do is create the token. Everything else is dealt with. They were shocked because even though they were at the forefront of this industry, nobody had talked to them about an asset like gold. And we brought it to the table. Now, we may not end up being the biggest, but we're going to have the best token because there's been about five or six of them launched since we started talking about it. None of them are set up for little people. They're not designed for you and I to get the best value out of it. And that's what we're about. We're about building a token for the population, not the wealthy people. So these are partners in this cooperation. Zanik, Avanok, Regardless, Tupan, we've talked through them. City, Real Estate, T-Drones, VU, Decentraleearn. Every piece of that block is built on a tokenized environment. And if you do some comparisons, you use the Zanik blockchain to make a payment, the fee is stupid small. And if you think it's not, go and try and do it with Ethereum. That is a stupid fee. So you can do this with portfolios. You can just buy a portfolio and let turn it on. It'll start minting. You don't have to mess with it. You don't have to feed it every day. You just check your wallet every now and then, and it will start creating tokens and coins. And that's a really good thing. So this is a simple way to get started. What about the reason for minting. If you were paying attention about a year ago, China completely banned the mining of Bitcoin in China. And that was because of the amount of energy it was drawing from their electricity grid. So it is a hugely energy intensive process. Minting is not. Minting uses a very small amount of energy. It's very fast to do, and it gets a move on. It gets through transactions much faster than anything else that's on the market. This gives us the ability to unbank 
our lives. We've just been talking about what the banks do and what they're doing to us every day right now. Every day. This gives us the ability to get outside of that environment. I can't wait. I'm trying to get there as quickly as possible because I do not want to be controlled by banks. The minting factor gives us sustainable income because every day, rain, hail or shine, our minting licenses produce tokens or coins. And if it's a Zanique minting license, it's producing coins. If they're two pans, they're tokens. Everything about their system is designed to give us sustainable income. How to participate in the multi-trillion dollar market? Really quite simple. Choose your masternode pack. Now, this is designed for product packs. And yep, I've bought one and they work and, man, it's just an easy way to do it. It just shows up in your back office, and next thing, those screenshots that I showed you today, some of them were off my website, some were off other people's, uh, just to keep a across-the-board look at it. Choose your masternode product pack. It's a great way to do it. You can save a bundle if you do it that way. Uh, if you've got... Eight or ten or twenty thousand euros, you get really big discounts. It's a great way to do it. The key to it is that we have an entire ecosystem, three hundred and sixty degree ecosystem. They call it. We can do smart chain, cross chain. Everything's decentralized. We've got our own hub with our cold wallets in it. We've got our own Nomo app with a blockchain encrypted communications device built into it works a treat debit cards on order staking hints i still haven't figured them out but i have got some tokens staked zanique swap will go live i'm sort of kind of thinking maybe that's what the fifth is about but yeah you're right martin this is an absolutely key slide because it completely gives you an overview of why we can debank. This is absolutely the entire process in one slide. Everything comes together on your phone. And you can spend it, you can save it, you can stake it. Whatever you want to do, you can do with your assets in this system. It's an amazing outcome for us. The only decision is which of these projects do you choose or are you owning a piece of them? Because if you buy a 188 euro selection or 22,000, you get everyday production. And it's really hard to argue with it because I only did one bit of maths. Those 510 two pans per day in that big pack at 3.69 cents, that adds up to a chunk of money over a year. And that's just one token. And forget all about the rest of them. That's just one. This is just an indicator because it's the shortest route to getting outside of the banking system. It absolutely will get us there. I'm doing more and more stuff outside of the banking system now. Um, if I need to, because I don't have the debit card, if I need to shop in um, Woolworths, I can do that with a gift card from ESC. That, that just solves all of that. Don't I have a bank account still. Don't use it for much. We're all keen to get ourselves debanked. And if you're not afraid of CBDCs, you should be. Because 
there's a whole lot more tied into the back of them than we have been aware of to date. So get started with a minimal amount if you have to, but get on this road. This is an interesting little conversation to listen to, America's weaponization of money. And this guy is saying, Rick Rule, that bank account seizures are only the start. It's going to get much worse. Here's Florian Heiser from Brisbane. And, you know, we've got a housing shortage in southeast Queensland, pretty bad one. And he's commenting on the fact that 79% of new housing is for international students in the capital cities. That's because international students are bringing in foreign currency. They bring money here. They're still not solving the problem of housing. It's sad. This one is very bizarre. This is from the Money GPS, and they've just finished a government inquiry in Switzerland about what happened to Credit Suisse that it had to be bailed out. And he's discovered that the documents are sealed for 50 years. So they're hoping that all of us are going to be long gone before that evidence comes out. Now, that's got to be some fairly bad information to seal it for 50 years. And this is supposedly the bank that has been for, I'm going to say, nearly 100 years leading the world in banking. JP Morgan Chase has taken over in the last little while, but I've got some interesting stories I can tell you about them as well. This is incredible. Sealed for 50 years. No national security risks or anything like that. This is a banking inquiry, and they won't tell the population what they found out. That's disgusting. They are bankrupt banks. Crypto assets are failing. Zanik, nope, our assets are backed. They have strength. Turmoil all over the financial sector, and where is gold going to go? It's on the move up, so all the people that aren't buying their $100 a month of gold are going to find themselves embarrassed in a year or so. Luckily, we do have some good news on our platform, and everything we do is designed to benefit all of our members. That's what we're about. That's our roadmap, and we believe in it. Thoughts and prayers to everybody in the Ukraine. That is still going on. It is sad and disturbing. That's it for us, ladies and gentlemen. This week, have we got any questions? Popping up, Martin made some very good comments coming through here. Physical hubs, I think the thing popped up in my website today. I've got to find out, but I think it said uh, do something, but I was in a bit of a hurry to get the presentation together, so I think they might be underway, mate. And if it's not that, it did say something about the physical hub, uh, but I'll be there in a few days, so see if I can bring one home. You're planning on doing anything with a bank in the next four or five years? And that's all of us. Be very careful. Be very careful. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a great fun night again, and we look forward to seeing you on the golden beaches of the world. Have a great night.